Hi guys, my name is Steve Cordoni and I'm an interior stylist and a style director at large for Bell Magazine. Today, I'm excited to be joining you for the virtual open day at Billy Blue College of Design at Torrens University, Australia. We're here at my country house in the office and I wanna kind of take you through this project that I've been working on for the past three years, um, as well as giving you a bit of a background of where I've come from, what I studied, um, and also give you a little mini masterclass on how to create the perfect mood board for any of your projects. So just a little bit of a background about where I've come from and what I studied. My dad was a builder and my mum was an interior decorator. So I've always kind of been around decorating and renovating and always loved creative and performing arts. I studied a lot of those different electives at school and then I went on to study interior design at Enmore Design College. That was a three to four year course and it taught me so many different design fundamentals but I definitely knew I wanted to go more into the sort of styling realm. So I'm glad that I've got the interior design background because I do do some residential projects but a lot of my work is to do with advertising, editorial, photo shoots um, and styling spaces and that's really where my passion lies. So now I'm the style director at large for Bell Magazine and I have my own business where I cover a lot of advertorial, advertising, editorial and also work a lot within the digital marketing and social media space. So there's a lot of different facets to my business but everything at the core of that is interior styling and interior design. So all up, I've probably been working within this space for 12 or so years and that's taken me you know, full time at Bell Magazine, it's taken me freelance working with a range of different clients from Ralph Lauren to Yves Saint Laurent to Jaguar Land Rover to Waterford Wedgwood and each one of those has kind of given me different ideas and different ways of thinking about how businesses are run and also in terms of what looks they have. So you've got to be able to adapt exactly, you know, not just what your look is, but what your client's look is and work out exactly how to kind of create the best and most successful outcome for both you, but definitely for the client. So now 12 years later, as Bell's style director at large and running my own business, which covers a lot of different things from event styling, editorial styling, advertising styling, and a lot within the sort of digital media marketing space, I kind of have kind of honed in exactly on what my look is and what my personal aesthetic is. So today, obviously, we're shooting here at my country house um, in Orange, in New South Wales, and it's definitely sort of a combination of my aesthetic that I've kind of developed over the years and definitely my kind of core style. So no matter what project I'm working on, whether that's a residential interior, an event, or a photo shoot for a magazine or a client, I always, always start with a mood board. I usually do it in two parts. The first is a digital kind of computer-based, image-based mood board. And the second, I play with materials and textures and I create a sort of vibe board. So here we are, I'm in front of the computer in the office and creating a mood board, the first step of that is to create an image-based mood board. And it's probably one of the first fundamental things that I learned when I was studying. And I've literally carried that through my 12, 13 year career. Um, Photoshop was one of the first skills that I learned in terms of a module and I used that to kind of create these image based mood boards. So today I want to show you how to create the mood board for this design that I've done here at Rosedale Farm um, which has been a, a passionate labour of love over the past three years um, but it's very much my aesthetic so I want to show you how from choosing any images that I found on Pinterest or Instagram and have collated that room by room, you know, in a folder on my computer. Um, I then create a mood board which gives me images and a visual kind of representation of how I ideally would like this space to look. Creating the kitchen here at Rosedale Farm, I always start with a kind of, you know, a document and a folder for everything. So my very first point of call is to find some inspiration images. And these can just be anything that I found on Pinterest, Google Images, you know, I've scanned in from magazines, Instagram, and it just kind of gives me the overall look and kind of different references that I've seen that I love. And then from there, I go to kind of kitchen colors, things that I kind of have seen. And I put all that in to kind of create the overall kitchen mood board which looks something like this. And this is just created in Photoshop. So, you know, I've put different finishes, so the timber of the floor that I really want, the marble that I want to use for the bench tops, little details like the handles and the PowerPoint outlets. You know, this hero light was really probably one of the first starting points um, of the kitchen that I wanted to create. And then I also put the different little styling tools. So how am I going to style this space? How's it going to look? So, you know, tapware as well, things like that, which really kind of give me a visual representation of the overall look of what hopefully will be achieved 
at the end of a project. When you start to create your own visual mood board, you know, inspiration can be anything. It can be a sculpture, a piece of art, or you know, even a, a snippet of a colour or a fabric. Anything that kind of leads you into the project that you're working with. And documentation is super important. So all of your referencing, images, um, you know, products that you've seen, document that, keep that all really organized on your laptop or whatever kind of PC item you're using. Um, and that was really one of the key things that I learned first up, that more organization you have in terms of all of those referencing points, the easier the project will be. Okay, so that's part one as a visual kind of image-based mood board. Part two is very much a tactile material-based mood board, which is really gonna give you and your client the kind of look and the overall aesthetic of what you wanna create. For me, I personally like to use a tray to kind of create these material-based mood board. So I'm going to use this sort of rattan tray because again this kind of goes on with my overall aesthetic but you can use an acrylic tray or something you've got lying around just so you can contain all of your different samples. So using different materials in your mood board this is really going to give you and your client the perfect visual representation of how the project is going to turn out. So I've got here something that I use for the flooring. It's a recycled French oak, which I really love, and that's what we actually used in our project. Um, this tumbled marble is a really beautiful marble that we used in the laundry and the mudroom. Um, this little tile we use behind as a splashback behind the old oven. Um, and again, you can still see that now it's starting to take shape and you can kind of visualize exactly how the kitchen's going to turn out even down to things like colours of the cabinetry. So you place that in there and you want everything to kind of visually tell a story. So as we add different fabric samples and you know tactile elements that are going to be in the actual project, we can see that this is the next layer from you know part one of our visual representation. But now we can actually see all the different kind of materials working together, which is so beneficial for you to see and definitely for your client. So that's part two of our mood board, which is really about seeing textures and finishes and materials. And for me, you know, to build up that catalogue and that dialogue between you and different brands, that's a really key, crucial element into building your design ethos. So now that we've got our two mood boards, one with our visual representation of different references that we've sourced online, um, and two with our kind of physical tactile material board, we can really use those together in conjunction to see exactly how the project's gonna look I've used these materials in my kitchen and I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's not to say that things can't move and shift out of these mood boards, but if you've got this honed in as your blueprint from the get-go, I think you'll come up with a really successful interior. So here we are in the kitchen and you can see how all those initial reference images and our materiality mood board have really informed a lot of the decisions that are in our finished project. So things like the recycled French oak chevron flooring were the key design element that I wanted to include in this kitchen. Um, the marble was also a really key crucial part. It's Arabescado Bagli from CDK Stone and those two kind of almost contrasting but perfectly complementing materials are a really strong design element within the kitchen. So aged brass is really one of my favourite materials to use. I like it because it kind of gives it a little bit of a metallic edge and I definitely wanted to use that. So as we saw in the materiality mood board, I've then kind of applied that to handles for the doors and tapware. So this is our sort of main lounge living area and you can see that stylistically the look of the space is very much that sort of dichotomy between contemporary and traditional and so a lot of the kind of finishes and the overall look of it is really defined yes by the mood board for the kitchen but it also has its own sort of individual identity. So when you're creating your mood boards, room by room, always be thinking about the overall bigger picture. So each space to talk to each other, but they can also have their own sense of identity. That can be simple as kind of using similar finishes and similar color palettes, but also give them room to move. So creating a mood board can kind of inform finishes and the overall bigger picture of the space, but also those little details, those styling elements. So whether it's styling a coffee table or a side table or a bedside table, all those different materials and finishes and the tone and colour palette of the space should really talk to each other. So for me, learning about those key design elements and principles at college have really led me to the business that I have 13 years later. For me, learning about colour and spatial awareness and planning and computer programs, even something as simple as putting a mood board together, they've been really the foundation of my business um, and I definitely wouldn't have had the success of my business without that formal training at college. 
So thank you so much guys for joining me here today for the mini masterclass at Rosedale Farm, part of Billy Blue's virtual open day. I really hope you're inspired to learn more about design and I look forward to you joining me for a live chat.